Hello everyone, this is Lisa De Nicholas with I Read Somewhere That. And this week I'd like to talk about reviews. Now, reviews can be wonderful or terrible things. For example, Joyce Carol Otis said, A good, sympathetic review is always a wonderful surprise. I really like this one from Danielle Steele, and I know, I mean, I'm, I'm supposedly a literary writer and I'm quoting Danielle Steele, but this is just so perfect. A bad review is like baking a cake with all the best ingredients and having someone sit on it. So <laughs> that's pretty much, <laughs> oh, that's pretty much how it sums it up for me. Then there's this one from Dustin Hoffman, although he is an actor, but still. A good review from critics is just another stay of execution. So it's really kind of kind of funny. Now, we used to have um, Stephen Beatty at the Quill Choir. And the Quill Choir used to be like the bastion of reviews. And that was, you know, the reason for putting your book out there. You'd hope to get a review from the Quill Choir and you'd hope that it would, would be a good one. So... In February of this year, Kenneth White wrote this piece on uh, the, the loss of Stephen Beatty. Uh, Canada loses its last critic. Quill and Choir, the one and only trade publication in the Canadian book world, announced this week that Stephen Beatty, who's been reviewing books there for a dozen years, will be leaving his post at the end of this month. I like to say I had the only paid lit literary critical gig in Canada, he says, half jokingly, but he may be right. I can't think of anyone employed to review books at a Canadian publication. And White says it's a sad situation, and it's true. At the end of the last millennium, every respectable daily newspaper in Canada had a book section with a books editor. A half a dozen had full-time critics, and most of the rest paid decent fees for freelance reviews. McLean, Saturday Night, and Books in Canada employed full-time critics. All are gone. So it is a very interesting state of affairs. Um, and I'd like to introduce a new initiative that I read about on Instagram, which is um, by the Canadian Book Network. If you go and have a look in CDN Book Network, there's a form that you can fill in and it will actually help you to get books and review them because that's pretty much what we're going to have to be doing is creating new ways to review books. Um, that's the only thing that is going to save us. Now, I'm going to quote another piece from Nathaniel Moore's uh, Honoraria, Honorarium, which is recently published. And he emphasizes blurbs are endorsements, not reviews. Blurbs, sometimes referred to as endorsements, are usually offered by more established writers who will lend your book some credibility. They are often written before a book is published and they appear on the front and back covers as well as in catalogues and on publishers' websites. These are not reviews. Reviews appear when the book has come out and are written from an ARC, an advanced reader copy, which your publisher may decide to create, usually for fiction or non-fiction titles, and will send out to media in advance for the publication date. So I know um, I've already chatted about um, the the blurb situation, but I just thought that I would mention that because that's a, that's a pretty interesting that's pretty interesting what his comment about reviews. Now, if you go um, to Goodreads, because Goodreads is a massive forum community, etc. Um, so what about Goodreads? One might ask. So I read this online: why Goodreads is bad for books. And this was a piece written by Sarah Manavis um, for the New Statesman. And I just thought it was, it was pretty good too. So, quote, On a typical day, a longtime user of Goodreads, the world's largest community for reviewing and recommending books, will feel like they're losing their mind. After numerous frustrated attempts to find a major new release to like, comment on, or reply to in messages and reviews, to add to what they've read to their shelf, discover new titles, users know that they'll be forced to give up. Confronted with the fact that any basic expected functionality will evade them. Sometimes even checking what they've already read will be next to impossible. 
Across a huge range of reading habits and preferences, this is just one thing that unites millions of good u- Goodreads users, that Goodreads sucks and is just shy of unbearable. End of quote. Now, speaking from personal experience, I've had mixed reviews on Goodreads. Some people love my work. Some people love to hate my work, and they love to do it on Goodreads. And I'll be honest, it doesn't feel good. You know, you go on and you're expecting a nice surprise, and you find that someone has sat on your cake. And uh, you kind of just stoically, you know, pick yourself up, and off you go and try to pretend that you didn't read what you just read. So the situation with reviews is largely changing. You know, social media anyone and everyone is entitled to an opinion. And that's great in a way, but it also does bring, uh, it does bring some hardships with it. It, The editorial integrity, for example, of Stephen Beattie is sorely lacking because with Stephen, you knew a respected reviewer, you were in the hands of a respected viewer. Now you're not sure whose hands you're in and who is sitting on your cake. Anyway, so um, this is the latest edition, and I hope you'll check out the Canadian um, news on, on, sorry, I'm mumbling things here, the Canadian Book Network on Instagram, because I feel like this is the future. Word of mouth, um, sharing things in a positive forum. You know, I have a review site, which I'm not doing anymore, but I did for many years, called the Minerva Reader. And my philosophy was this. I published something if I liked a book. If I didn't like a book, well, heck, it could have just depended on the day that I read it. Maybe I was in a bad mood and it didn't appeal to me. So I'm not in this to trash other people's books. I'm in this to share the love. And there's a lot of love to be shared. So there you go. Seven minutes on a Sunday. And I hope you've enjoyed this one. And if you love a book, review it. And if you don't love a book, Yeah, maybe just move on to another one. Thank you so much. Bye.